Hi there. Um, I'm really happy to be um, um, to have the opportunity to send this video to this uh, to your Purple seminar. Um, my name is Nick Swamy. I'm a, a researcher at the Rise Group at Microsoft Research in Redmond, and I'm going to tell you a bit about some work we've been doing in the past few years on programming with proofs for high assurance software. So, um, what do I mean by high assurance software? There's software in a number of domains for which the correctness and security requirements are at a fairly uh, high bar where um, system functionality de really depends critically on um, getting this code right. For instance, in uh, cloud infrastructure, uh, things like um, um, the virtualization technology used to secure the platform, uh, for instance, at Microsoft, it's Microsoft Hyper-V securing um, the Azure cloud or um, uh, in uh, secure communications, Things like crypto protocols like TLS or WireGuard, a, v a kernel VPN in Linux, um, and in other domains like financial technology or even e-voting, uh, software plays a critical role in ensuring system correctness and uh, security. And uh, getting this code right is really important. But of course, as we know, there's bugs everywhere in, um, in, in software written today. And um, this manifests itself in a variety of things from, in the, say, in the financial domain, from stock market flash crashes to um, uh, uh, confidentiality leaks in, um, in cloud providers. So um, what we've been looking at is, you know, um, a long-standing agenda. Can formal proofs about software um, come to the rescue here and allow us to build this kind of software with really high assurance? Now, I'd be thinking, well, computer scientists have been talking about doing formal proofs about programs for many decades. Um, and um, is this, can this really work at scale? And I think we've made a lot of progress in the last decade or so, um, a decade and a half, where as a community, we've begun to be able to apply our, our program proof techniques to genuinely large systems. And at, my, at MSR, in the last few years, we've had this project called Project Everest, where we've been looking at building um, a uh, verification libraries and a stack of communication components with full formal proofs. And these days, we um, under in our CI system, we routinely build multiple times a day um, uh, a system that is about 600,000 lines of code and growing. Um, with full formal proofs of correctness and security. And that's at, at that scale, uh, things only work if they're modular. And uh, we do proofs at um, the modular proofs at, at, at a large scale and keep chugging along. So uh, uh, we're beginning to approach a, a scale where um, I, I think it's, it's not uh, infeasible to think that in a year or two, this will be um, a couple of million lines of code. Um, so using our, uh, our, our tools, um, uh, the tool uh, that uh, I've been with collaborators been building for several years now is a, is a programming language and program verification tool called FSTAR. And FSTAR is the, is the, um, is the uh, verification engine behind our, uh, our verified code base. And our tools have been, uh, our code has been deployed in a, in a number of places. So um, in, in a sense, um, uh, Proofs and programs developed in FSTAR are being used by billions of people today, um, even if they don't know it. So, for instance, in um, in Hyper-V, we use code produced by FSTAR for uh, securing um, communication between host and guest. Um, in the secure communication space, we are um, we have proofs about the uh, transport layer of Quick and TLS and uh, our verified crypto runs in a number of places, including Firefox, Embed TLS, Signal, the Linux kernel with WireGuard, and um, um, and uh, in a number of other scenarios, we have verified Merkle trees for enterprise blockchains. Um, in the financial technology space, uh, I, uh, uh, several third parties use our tools for um, for proving their code correct. Um, and in e-voting. Um, um, Microsoft has an, uh, an open offering called Election Guard and SDK for building auditable um, uh, elections. 
and um, uh, we provide the crypto for them uh, for that SDK. And even in other domains, that things like verifiable multi-party computations, they're proven correct. Um, things like proven correct, high-performance, verifiable key-value stores developed using our our tool chain. So this stuff is real, and uh, program verification and program proofs that um, are, uh, are, at, are at a point where this can be applied to real systems and um, genuinely move the needle on improving the security and, and uh, assurance of the entire system. Um, this is based on decade, a decade plus work on um, on this uh, our tool chain, building on the research that's come out of the PL community um, over several decades. Um, for instance, we, um, uh, FSTAR itself um, um, is based on probably a 10 or so popple papers. We, we've repeatedly uh, improved the system, trying to address the needs of our, of our applications. And um, simultaneously, as we improve the, the foundations and the tooling, we've been developing applications to, to, um, to drive the tooling. In a way, it's been quite synergistic. Um, and uh, FSTAR broadly is a, is a programming language that uh, uh, looks a bit like um, OCaml or F Sharp, uh, but it comes with a type system that lets you do, that, that looks more like COC or AGDA um, in that it comes with full dependent types. And um, it's it's backed by SMT automation to help you do proofs uh, uh, in many cases um, by SMT rather than by by tactics. Uh, although you can use tactics too. So you write your program in F star and you can compile it by default to OCaml or F sharp. Um, but we have one thing we've been using F star for as a lot is as a framework to embed DSLs domain-specific languages. So we have DSL embeddings in FSTAR for, um, for several DSLs. One of them is called LOSTAR, which is a DSL for C-like programming embedded in FSTAR. And if you write programs in LOSTAR, you can do proofs about against a low-level memory model dealing with things like um, manual memory management and low-level representations of memory, stack allocation, these kinds of things, and um, extract your code to C or to WebAssembly. Uh, we have a DSL called Veil that is intended for assembly level programming in FSTAR. This has been really crucial to get high performance crypto, both LOSTAR and Veil, high performance crypto out of our tool chain. Uh, we have a DSL dedicated for parsing and serialization uh, called EverParse, which we used extensively. Um, and um, uh, that too produces a C code. Um, and recently, we've been kind of the frontier of our of our tool chain these days is um, exploring concurrent separation logic embedded in FSTAR for concurrent and distributed programming with proofs. And we are considering uh, additional backends potentially. For instance, extracting our code to Rust is something we've been thinking about uh, recently. This is based on a um, a, a large team of, of people and um, collaborations across many institutions. Um, at, um, it's too much for me to, to, to speak to everybody here, but uh, let me just highlight our, my colleagues at MSR Redmond, Chris, Jonathan, and Tahina, and uh, Asim at MSR India, who's been doing a lot of work on the, on the tool chain as well. Uh, but this is collaborations with MSR Cambridge, INRIA, CMU, Edinburgh, Rosario in Argentina, and several visitors and, and um, interns and visiting researchers and so on. Um, uh, uh, that's a picture of us um, a year or so ago, at uh, maybe two years ago, at, at Cambridge. Um, we welcome collaborations and, and contributions, so if this kind of thing interests you, please reach out. So I thought maybe just in a minute or two, I'd give you a very whirlwind kind of taste of the some of the techniques that we use. So broadly, we've been building um, many kinds of secure communication components. And um, broadly, the structure of such an a component is that there is an application. It's trying to communicate some structured message, say a, a key value pair, uh, uh, across the network to a peer. So what it does is it uses a message formatter, turns this, this structured message into a, some binary formatted message, which is then signed and encrypted. And then there's a second a wire format that happens dictated by some protocol, a protocol format, and then a, a wire format encrypted message, encrypted signed message, is sent across the network on an untrusted network. 
and the other side reconstitute, reconstitutes the, the high-level message by, um, by parsing and decrypting and verifying a signature and so on. So having built a number of applications like this, we have various components. Notably, uh, in order to orchestrate all of this, we, you need a library of, uh, you, you need a way to, to write state machines and uh, deal with concurrency. Um, and you need a way to do um, uh, message formatting. So we have Everparse, which is this uh, parser generator uh, to deal with um, the, the formatting and parsing. We have a library of verified cryptographic primitives that's our main crypto provider called Evercrypt. And uh, we've been developing tools uh, to deal um, in this new DSL called Steel to deal with um, concurrency and distribution and state machines. Um, Everpass broadly, our, our goal there is is um, is to build um, to bring parser generators to low level uh, programming, just as we use parser generators for uh, in in compiler development. Let's say uh, currently people writing low level protocols because they're uh, either performance, um, there are performance constraints or because of various other deployment constraints, like they must run in the kernel or something like this, they tend to write their parsing code by hand. And um, this is a can be a recipe for disaster, um, where if you're trying to parse adversarial input manually, you can easily get this wrong. And um, at that low level, any flaw can result in a system takeover. So our goal there with Everparse is to kind of abolish writing low-level binary parsers by hand and to instead generate high-performance um, verified code from a high-level um, declarative specification of message formats in a way that integrates seamlessly with existing code bases. And um, our tool chain produces code that's um, memory safe, arithmetically safe, functionally correct, and uh, also free from double fetches. So broadly what you do is you, you write a, a high-level specification um, and from the specification we have a tool that will produce F star code and proofs um, where you can the, the proofs establish that, for instance that a parser and a serializer are mutually inverse and uh, and then you can extract the code to uh, to memory safe low-level C code that has the same functional uh, correctness property uh, the result of doing this is that you get parsers that are that are low level and correct and secure uh, and with performance that can be remarkably fast um, even when compared to handwritten parsers so for instance here in comparison to handwritten um, parsers for c plus for um, bitcoin transactions written in c plus um, plus everpass generated parsers can be 13 times faster than handwritten c plus plus code for Evercrypt, Evercrypt is a, a, is a uh, broad-ranging cryptographic provider that provides a, a large suite of cryptographic algorithms in a, uh, customized to various platforms, implemented in a variety of, implemented in C and in assembly, and um, uh, with full proofs of, of correctness and security. Um, Evercrypt is used in a number of places, ranging from Linux to Firefox to uh, various um, Azure components. Uh, it comes out to um, about the library itself at the end is about 43,000 lines of C code and 15,000 lines of assembly code. So it's quite a substantial effort, effort with full form of proofs. And uh, we've really been kind of uh, aiming for one criterion for adding an algorithm to, to Evercrypt is to ensure that it is both correct and um, as fast, if not faster than the best unverified implementations out there. So recently, for instance, uh, in in Evercrypt, we have an implementation of AES GCM, which is the the the, uh, the, the authenticated encryption construction that secures 90% um, of uh, TLS connections. Um, and uh, we recently produced verified code for this that um, matches and perhaps slightly exceeds the performance of unverified OpenSSL code for the same thing. Um, uh, finally, just a word about Steel. Um, this is kind of where the, the cutting edge of where um, on the language design and um, side uh, FSTAR is evolving. We have we've been working on embedding a concurrent separation logic in FSTAR, and we have a, a, a couple of recent papers describing this, which you can learn more about from that link. Um, we see this as a way to uh, scale proofs beyond what is done by um, what can be done with SMT alone. 
So using steel, we do proofs use in concurrent separation logic using a mixture of um, tactics for doing separation logic proofs and SMT for um, automating um, arithmetic and other parts of the proof. So just some takeaways. Um, we verify and deploy reusable critical software components at scale. Um, uh, and um, our goal is to um, uh, fully verify or harden critical subsystems of existing um, in, in existing software while achieving high performance and usability. Um, in the future, we aim to be applying many of the techniques that we've developed over the years to aim to reduce the bar on building program proofs further. And we see that kind of evolving in three directions. One is to do more proof and code generation from domain-specific languages. Everparse has been a great example of that to produce um, verified parsers at, um, that are push button with push button proofs. We expect to do more of that. A lot of the code that we, uh, another big hammer that we use these days is meta programming, so that we write code once in a very abstract, generic way, and then meta program to specialize and partially evaluate and produce many, uh, a large amount of verified code from a single, very generic proof uh, object. And um, a third thing is, uh, as exemplified by things like Steel, we're aiming to sort of raise the level of abstraction and allow you to program um, against a, a stack of verified abstractions, um, uh, things like channels and um, state machines, um, uh, producing low-level code um, through the tool chain rather than being uh, forcing the programmer to work at the lowest level of abstraction. So. Um, uh, do reach out um, if you're curious to hear more about this, um, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to share some of our work at, the, at your seminar. Thank you.